Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about natural language processing. I'll be going through a step-by-step -step walkthrough of a project that I've done, um, along with some sample Python code. And you can find all my code on GitHub at a dash of data. But first I want to start with an introduction to what natural language processing is and how it fits into data science. And then I'm going to be going through a lot of code. So um, first on data cleaning, then on exploratory data analysis, and some NLP techniques that are popular. And at the end, I'm going to summarize it all with additional resources. So starting with natural language processing, what is it? Well, I think of NLP in two different parts. There's the natural language piece and the processing piece. So for natural languages, um, one of these three here is not like the other. And you can probably tell pretty quickly that Python is not like the other two. So English and Chinese are natural languages because these were languages that were created naturally over time that people use to communicate with each other. Whereas Python is a coding language and it was specifically created um, for coding. So English and Chinese are natural languages because they're used for communication. And then for the processing piece, if you think about a processes are on your computer, it's how a computer carries out instructions. So if you put it all together, NLP is basically how a computer is able to deal with language or text data. And natural language processing falls under the greater umbrella of artificial intelligence, which is just a computer performing task that a human can do. So if you think about it, um, like you might have heard of computer vision, that's a computer trying to be a human's eyes and see objects. For natural language processing, it's a computer that's trying to interpret text just like a human would. So I'm going to go through a couple examples of natural language processing. First, let's say you're a manager at um, a company that sells hats and that sells shirts. And you want to know if people are happy with your products, your hats and your shirts. So you have a um, call center and people come in and um, you're recording all these messages and people are saying, oh, I love your hat so much or my shirt doesn't fit, things like this. So if you wanted to figure out um, what people are thinking about your product, you could go through and listen to all the uh, voice calls, but that's gonna take way too long. So instead what you can do is you can take that text data and you can apply some NLP on that. And then with the NLP, you can see which messages are positive and which ones are negative. And so overall, you can see that people really like your hats and people don't really like your shirts. And so this is called sentiment analysis, which is a type of NLP technique. Another NLP technique, um, so let's say you are a lawyer and um, you're working with a company and um, they have some money problems in that company. And you want to try to find out, um, are there any emails that have been going around that show that those money problems could have existed? Well, in that case, what you can do is you can use a different NLP technique. You can look at all of the emails that were sent um, at the company and you can use NLP to flag the emails as being part of different topics. So for example, um, a couple of these emails deal with projects, a couple of them are personal, some of them deal with money. And then maybe from here on, you can just filter the ones that deal with money and look at those and read those in detail uh, to figure out the company's money problems. And so in this case, this is a technique called topic modeling. And what this does is it looks at a bunch of texts and it figures out what are the topics um, that are occurring in those, um, in those pieces of text. All right, so another example of an NLP technique is let's say you um, work for an inspirational quote company and your job is to write inspirational quotes and you've written all these inspirational quotes for the year, but you still have one more month of inspirational quotes to write and you can't come up with them on your own. So what you can do is you can use an NLP technique 
to look at the quotes you've written before and create new ones. So this is called text generation. So, so far I've gone through three NLP techniques, sentiment analysis, topic modeling, and text generation. And these are all the ones that I'm going to be diving into detail in this tutorial. All right, so that was your introduction to natural language processing. Again, it's how to deal with text data. So for this next part, I want to talk about how NLP falls um, into data science because I'm a data scientist and so this is the way that I approach any NLP project. So data science um, is under the umbrella of analytics and analytics is all about using data to make decisions. Data science in particular um, consists of three main skills. So this is the data science Venn diagram and all data scientists will have these three types of skills. One is programming, so that's um, computer, uh, computer science and knowing how to code. Math and stats, so this includes some linear algebra, some calculus, some statistics. And then finally, communication. So after you've done all that number crunching and coding, can you wrap it all together in a story and communicate uh, your insights? And there's this one part here that I just want to mention that is the danger zone of data science. So if you are really good at programming and um, you also have communication skills, but you don't have the math and stats background, um, this is what we call the danger zone because maybe you're just importing Python libraries and using them, but you don't actually know how to accurately interpret the results, then you can interpret results incorrectly. And so whenever I teach data science, I always make sure that I supplement um, all of my lessons with the math behind all the algorithms that we use. So that's what I'm going to be doing um, in today's tutorial as well. Okay, so how does um, NLP work in Python within these three categories? Well, for the programming piece, um, within Python, there are a couple libraries we'll be using that help us deal with the data. So we're going to be using pandas as well as scikit-learn and also regular expressions. On the natural language processing piece, um, we're going to be using NLTK, which is Natural Language Toolkit, TextBlob, and also GenSim. And then for the math and stats piece, there are a couple different parts to that. So first, we have to figure out how to take all of our messy data and put it in a really clean format uh, to do further NLP techniques. So we're going to put all of the text data into um, something called a document term matrix. And then next we're going to do some exploratory data analysis on that um, data. And this is a really important part of any data science project. Um, for NLP, it ends up being a lot of word counts, which sounds pretty simple, um, but it's really powerful in the results that come from it. And then on the NLP piece, we're going to be going through the three techniques that I just um, gave examples of. So sentiment analysis, topic modeling, and text generation. And then finally for the communication piece, there's two important parts of this. One is project design. So being able to start with a question and uh, scope out a project, figure out how to visualize um, um, the data, and then finally extract insights from that. And then it's always important to have domain expertise in whatever project you're working on. So these are all the components um, that we'll be feeding into the project we're working on today. All right, so another thing I wanna talk about is the data science workflow. So this workflow is what I'm gonna follow um, as I'm giving this tutorial. So the first part of any data science project is to start with a question. And a lot of people think that when you're doing data science, you wanna start with the data, but that's actually incorrect. If you start with the data, you can get lost in the data. So instead, you should be starting with a question you wanna answer before you touch the data at all. After that, you get your data, you perform some EDA, you apply um, data science techniques that you know of, and then finally, you share the insights. So let's go through a simple example of what the data science workflow looks like. So I'm gonna start with a question. If I study more, will I get a higher grade? 
Okay, so now that I had that question, um, let's get some data for that. So here's some data I have. I have a bunch of students, how many hours they studied, and what grade they got. Great, so I've gotten the data. Does anyone notice anything a little off with this data? You probably see that Eve studied two hours, T-W-O, and then Grace has a typo in her grade. And so at this point, after you get the data, you also want to clean it. And in those two cases, I am going to replace that with data that I think actually makes more sense. All right, so we've cleaned the data. So the next step is to perform EDA, or exploratory data analysis. So a very popular way to do EDA is to take your data and visualize it. So in this case, I've taken that hour studies and grade data, and I've put it on this plot. So instead of trying to understand a table, I can easily look at this visualization and see what's happening. And here you can see um, that, first of all, there's a trend, right? There's an upward trend. The more you study, the higher grade you'll get. And also, there's one person who's doing much better than everyone else. So this person was Charlie. And um, Charlie didn't study that much, but he got a pretty high grade. So I was able to find all of that out just from doing EDA. I haven't even used any data science techniques yet. All right, so after EDA, the next step is to apply techniques. So what does this mean? Um, within data science, there are a lot of algorithms you can use. Um, so specifically, I mentioned those three NLP algorithms for today. But in this case, one technique I could apply is called linear regression. So I can create this line, which gives me this formula um, to calculate grade, telling me that uh, the grade is equal to this math equation that contains our studied. Okay, and at the very end, after I do all that, I have to pull together a story. And so the final story I have is, um, yes, there is a positive correlation between the number of hours you study and the grade you'll get. And specifically, this is the relationship. And finally, um, there's one person who's doing a lot better than the others, so you'll actually probably get slightly less than uh, that equation tells you. Okay, so right there is a full data science project. Okay, so for data science, we talked about how it's under the analytics umbrella. We talked about the data science Venn diagram and how knowing the math behind how algorithms work is really important. And then finally, we talked about the data science workflow. All right, next I'm gonna move on to the tutorial piece.